Now, on the other hand, there's players who are saying, I wish we didn't have that time off. We were hot that maybe we cool off during that time, and Houston managed to play during that time and win and beat a good Charlotte team. All right, let's talk about another thing that's happened in the last day or so. The refs are back. And it's what a relief to know that there's going to be no more arrogance, no more bad calls, no more technical fouls, no more coaches thrown out. I mean, what a relief. <laughs> yeah, obviously you jest, but the regular faces, the familiar faces will be there. The faces will remain the same. The tees will come from Joey. The oh, there he is. And I'm sure there's going to be a honeymoon period, uh, at least for the first couple of days. <laughs> But when they say not tonight, they still gonna take a couple of days. Yeah. But I hope that they'll come to work right away. <laughs> um, I think things will, st will still be back. We know that they make maybe you know five bad calls out of the whole game. But other than that, I mean, it's just like a joy that you know, hey, uh, these guys respect us and we should respect them. Well, I think you give them about a half of basketball, and then they'll, everyone will start hating them as well. <laughs> <laughs> the fans, coaches, and players will start yelling at them, and, uh, and they'll be the scapegoats. Yeah, I, I'm sure it won't take long before we all get back to whatever normal is, but it's interesting. I wonder if we're going to see the, uh, the difference. Now, they've got to, the referees have got to go to, uh, to camp just like the players do first. Of course, there's the rules interpretation, and, and of course they're gonna be getting to see if they're in good physical shape and everything. The thing that I hope, I think that first of all, the coaches are gonna start out by saying, hey, how did you vote? Because it was 27 to 26 to come back. Two referees didn't show up, two veteran uh, referees, Madden and O'Donnell, who probably could have changed the vote to, uh, to be against not coming back. The other, the other thing that's interesting is that what about the guys who uh, went and refereed for the last couple of weeks? I mean, I think these guys did a pretty good job. They worked real hard. Now they want to try to make it into the NBA. Will the fact that they were replacement or, quote, scab officials, will that hurt them? I hope not, because I think in a lot of ways they saved the game. I think the fans would have been very mad if we had no basketball at all. All right, let's turn to the game tonight at hand. The Jazz, a good shoot around again today. They've had a the couple of days off. Off, had an opportunity to relax a little bit, take the day off when we flew back from Houston on Friday night, take Saturday off. But uh, again, a, a good opportunity, as you said, Frank, to allow things to kind of settle down a little bit. We come off the big win. But this is a series that not only has tonight implications, but long-term implications. It's a tough game because it's a conference game, but we have to really come out ready to play. And the Rockets have an excellent team with Elijah Juan, Ori, Smith. I mean, they just keep coming at you. They have a very deep team. And uh, we need to be ready to play because, I mean, it's another game on the schedule, but uh, you have to take it seriously because it's a conference game, and at the end of the season, every game counts. We'll be ready. We know they'll be ready because um, they should not have lost at home. But I think we overcame, you know, versatility of uh, a lot of players that came off, off the bench and did a good job. So we have to do what we have to do at home and definitely play the game and try to go out there and win. Well, one thing you can be sure of is that Houston, uh, that it was a long term in between. Now, they played once in between right after the Jazz and beat Charlotte, but it's a long time wait. They want a measure of revenge tonight because uh, this is a series. We look back to last year's playoffs. We look back to every game the Jazz plays against the Houston Rockets. It's always exciting, and this one always seems to come down to a last second shot or some kind of a big game incident. Yeah, it's. Uh been a team we played a lot of games and uh, it's always exciting two very good teams uh, and usually comes down to a couple of possessions down in the fourth quarter you know you know that uh, this team you know probably in the future we have to meet down the line again so for home court advantage is important game for us and for them uh, he's he's ready to go, and, and you know, as I said, a team like that, a lot of pride, and they were beaten pretty soundly at home. Yeah, you know, it's funny about Elijah Warren. He's become such a good player that, you know, he can get 32 points and 15 rebounds, and, and you can say he didn't have a very good game. I think that the key against him during the last game was the physical play of our center's back.
against him. All right, talking about that last game, of course, it was Friday night in Houston. The Jazz, I think, played as well a game as I've seen them play for a long, long time. Without Brian Russell, he, he got his second start of the uh, season, and boy, did he take advantage of it because Brian Russell came out early, played extremely well, showed everybody he could do, scored on the baseline drive here, was the was the, the uh, player of the game. His outside shot was falling as well. He played with a lot of confidence. He had 11 points in the first quarter, including a three that capped a 15-2 Jazz run, and Utah led 19 to seven at that point. The Jazz continue to build on that lead, and they did it with defense. Stockton finding Carl on the break. The Jazz led by 13, 53, 40 at the intermission. The third quarter, the Jazz led by as many as 16. Greg Foster off the bench. The drive, and it goes down. Great play by Foster. Rockets aren't the two-time champions for nothing, though. Sam Cassell tied the game at 92 midway through the fourth, but then John Stockton and the Jazz go on a run. The, the uh, Stockton hits the three-pointer for the Jazz, and then John hit another tray as the Jazz scored on their next six possessions and just really buried the Rockets. Brian Russell finished with a career-high 19 points, and the Jazz won this one 112-105. Uh, it was the first loss of the year, Frank, for the Houston Rockets in the summit. Uh, no other team has been able to do that. And as you said, the Jazz playing their best overall game. And you look at the numbers, and they, they bear that out. Well, I think the big thing is that you look at our defense. And I think I agree with uh, Coach Sloan. When you play great defense, it'll pay off on the offensive end, so you get more layups. And I think that we took some very, very good shots. Our so shot selection was excellent. By the same token, I don't think their shot selection was very good, going 5 for 20 from the three-point area. And, of course, I think overall, we just played a very solid game. And I was impressed with the fact that when they did come back, we, were, we managed to always get the next basket and stay ahead of Yeah, them. Rockets never took the lead. They got that tie at 92, and that, I think, was one of the keys to the game. The Jazz against the Rockets. Jazz tonight continues coming your way from the Delta Center right after this. Jazz tonight is brought to you in part by cold-filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Get out of the old, get into the cold. Proform Products, the world's leading manufacturer of fitness and exercise equipment. And by Pizza Hut. You'll love the stuff we're made of. And the graphic says it all. Jazz tonight, the Rockets against the Utah Jazz in a rematch of last Friday night, Barnburner and the Summit in Houston, Ooh. Texas. Welcome back to the Delta Center. Uh, Thursday night should be exciting tonight, however. And Hot Rod Hunley is standing by live courtside. Hots, the Jazz are looking for some changes tonight and lineup changes, maybe. Well, I, well one thing's for sure that Jamie Watson is out of this ballgame, by the way. He, uh, he sprained his ankle in practice. Jerry Sloan said that it, it's day to day. He may go right on the injury list. And ironically, they you know waived uh, uh, James Donaldson. But when these two teams meet, uh, it's unbelievable. They are the world champions. Speaking of the Rockets, yet if you look at the stats, you think a Jazz should be right up there with them. Here is the tale of the two cities in field goal percentage. The Jazz are second. The Rockets are, are third. And if you look at points scored. Each team at 105 plus. Jazz are third. Rockets are fifth. Then an NBA uh, ranking three-point field goal percentage. The Jazz 39-4 over the Rockets at 36 for the Utah fourth, and the Rockets 13th. But they are the world champions. Then it goes back to the same thing that happened a year ago. Rockets won the first two games in the regular season. Jazz beat them in the other three. And when you get to the playoffs, Rockets win. Now the Jazz won the first game down in Houston. Well, James Donaldson, as I mentioned, the big guy has been with the team. He traveled with us all the way. They put him on uh, waivers on Sunday. Now, if, if Jamie goes on the uh, injured list, then maybe they'll bring him back. Uh, who knows? But uh, the Jazz were going to this ball game uh, a little shorthanded. John Stockton, by the way, has been doing it all for the Jazz. Last two games, uh, in his last three games, he's averaged 21 points. He's had 65% of his field goals, 5 for 10 for three-point line, 10 of 11 for the free throw line, and he's leading with 13 assists per game, and those three games averaging over uh, 10 a game. Brian Russell's been on a tear for the Jazz, by the way. Brian, in his last two games as a starter, 13 points per game, 8 of 11 for the field. He's 8 for 8 from the free throw line. He's averaged four rebounds. And he's getting 24 minutes, and he's going to start again tonight. And he had that uh, career high, as you mentioned, 19 against Houston down in Houston. He had five rebounds and three steals in that ball game. Quick as a cat, and he makes things happen. Kind of guy like Jerry Sloan uh, likes to have. Okay, guys, that should be a great game. 
It should be fun. Uh, Frank, I don't know. Uh, Brian Russell comes in. We know he sparked this team. And uh, the knock against him was his shooting wasn't good. But, wow, you look at those numbers, he has really elevated his game since last year. Steve, last year he was overweight, I'd say, by as much as 20 pounds. The thing is, when you come to camp and you're not ready to play, you get in the coach's doghouse. This year, he came early to the rookie camp. He went to the double sessions. He played very, very well. And in my mind, all right, I mean, it has nothing to do with anything else. I thought that he would be the starting small forward. However, Benoit was the starting forward last year. There's no reason to take that job away from him. He did a good job. We won 60 games. The coaches went in that direction. But we weren't successful. We didn't get production out of that position. And the coaches, and I think, I think Jerry Sloan made the right decision. He gave Benoit all the chance he could. He's decided to bring him off the bench, and he started Brian, and we are playing better. There is no doubt about it. Uh, Benoit's been better. Brian's been better. So it was a good coach's decision. Yeah, that's a win-win all around. You know, we, we got an interesting guest here tonight, a guy who we have seen for years in opposing uniforms in the person of Danny Ainge, who now works as a color analyst for well, TNT. It's awful. Everybody, all these women have been coming up to me saying, Danny, can I have your autograph? <laughs> They're mistaking me for him. I, I knew that. I knew that because neither one of you ever committed a foul in your entire careers. <laughs> But Danny Ainge is here, and of course, he might not be the most unbiased observer, but we asked him, are these the two best teams in the West? I think these are the two best teams in the West right now, and I think Houston uh, has proven that they're the best team in the entire league the last two years. I don't think either team is playing particularly well right now. Uh, Utah still has, uh, you know, they need to get Antoine healthy, I think, to be real good, and Felton Spencer. And uh, Houston, uh, Akeem hasn't been playing great the, as we were accustomed to seeing him play in the playoffs last year. Uh, I think their team is kind of pacing themselves. They realize they won a championship finishing sixth in the NBA in the regular season, so maybe there's not the importance on the regular season that there used to be. Sure, Ainge enjoys making his living behind the mic now, but are there days when he still wishes he could lace them up? Yeah, you know, when I come do some of the games, especially big games like this, Houston and Utah, playoff intensity type of game, I feel like I want to be out there playing. But uh, the other six days a week when I wake up and I'm at home, I have no desire to be out there playing. So it evens out. Yeah, it, it evens out, I'm sure. And uh, the travel routine is not nearly as tough. And uh, he's made a good adjustment to the booth. But as you point out, he's always been kind of vocal anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, uh, he was a competitor. He was a competitor at BYU. And of course, when he went to the pros, he was even a greater competitor. He's one of the country's great athletes. You know, you don't play two major sports. They talk about Deion Sanders and those guys. This guy did it 10 years ago. You know, he was playing in the major leagues in baseball and the major leagues in basketball at the same time. You know, he's a great golfer. Uh, I understand he was a good football player. Just a real good all-around guy, and I know he's going to be a good announcer. All right, the Jazz against the Rockets about 25 minutes away. We'll return with more on Jazz tonight in just a moment.